All right, we're back. Mission 43 podcast, and we have the newest member of the team, kind of, Zach Tibbetts, and he is back uh, working for Higher Heroes USA and leading the employment team for Mission 43. Oh, yeah. Zach, born and raised in Lewiston, Marine Corps veteran, and knows much about the employment realm. Going to give some legitimate advice that was very helpful to me and I think will be helpful to a lot of those listening about employment, specifically veteran employment in the state of Idaho. Awesome. So hit subscribe and let's get started. We have 100% more mustache on our podcast than Jocko's. Join us in learning about the stories and the people who inspire us. This is the Mission 43 Podcast. I'm Dan Nelson. And I'm Brian Madden. Idaho is our home. The military is what we did. Zach Tibbetts, welcome, brother. Thank you so much. I you appreciate came it. all the way from Lewiston. Yep. Is that considered North Idaho to you? Or it is. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people consider you know Sandpoint North Idaho, but but Lewiston is North Idaho. A lot us. of people down here consider anything North of McCall North Idaho. <laughs> right, so right, right, right. Opinions yeah. vary, but Lewistonian. Yep. How long have you been in Lewiston? Uh, my whole life, except for the four years I spent in uh, at Kent Pendleton. Um, yeah, my whole life, born and raised. Very cool. Yeah. Well, you're on coming on board. You're the newest member of the Mission Forty Three team. Yep. We've had a couple new members come on, but you're specifically working in the employment field of Mission 43. Tell us about what's new and cool and exciting in the realm of employment. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of things, um, a lot of partnerships going on. Um, I, I, my, my biggest thing that I want to be doing is connecting people with employers. So mm-hmm. um, we have an awesome team of transition specialists at Hire Heroes USA. Um, but my goal moving forward is to be connecting those clients who are working with transition specialists to employers. Um, so, you know, some of the ones that, uh, that come to mind are the city of Boise. Um, you know, Tony Lyles, I know he's been on oh, the yeah. show. Um, great guy. He's got tons of jobs that we're, that we're looking at that he's uh, sent our way. So I really want to be a liaison in the community, um, connecting people to employers and making sure that they're, they're finding meaningful careers like Higher Heroes did for me. It's kind of new, like your position, even though we've yeah. always had employment pillar of Mission 43 yeah. and we've always had an amazing partnership with Higher Heroes USA. That organization, your organization in Higher Heroes yeah. is laser focused on their mission, which is translating military experience into effective resumes to get people jobs, both spouses and military veterans. But you're kind of doing something different now. Yeah. Yeah. So my my like I said, my goal is to be out in the community running with Mission 43 um, and making sure that we're making those connections. So, you know, I've done the resume writing piece. I've done the the helping people with interviews piece, which I'm still more than happy to do and helping people who need the help. But I want to be making sure that I'm connecting people who need the help and then also connecting people to employers. Because I think that's a big missing piece is, you know, we have tons of veteran talent who are looking for jobs in the the great state of Idaho. Um, And I have direct access to those people. So if I can make those meaningful connections, I'm absolutely gonna do it. What's the process someone takes like through Hire Heroes USA? So if I'm leaving the military or if I'm a military spouse, Mm -hmm. what what do I, what, what are the expectations? So sign up first. I, I always, when I, the first thing I say is go on, go online to our website, hireheroesusa.org and register for services. From there, they're going to be assigned to a transition specialist. Um, they'll do some outreach, just get to know them a little bit, do a maybe 30, 60 minute phone call with them to get to know what their situation is, where they're at career wise, things like that. And then the first step is the, the resume revision. So they're going to get a brand new resume for free, which is a very big thing, yeah. <laughs> especially in today's market. You know, people are charging five hundred, a thousand dollars in some cases for resumes. So if you can get a free professionally written $1, resume, $1, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> wow. There's career coaches out there and things like that who will charge that much for it. Um, are you running into people who have, act, have paid for this absolutely, prior? Absolutely. And they're like, yeah, I, I, I paid for a resume, you know, two weeks ago. I signed up to get some help with interviews. And I'm like, holy cow, like <laughs> we could have done this for free. Right. And Nine, nine times out of ten, it's going to be a better resume yeah. because we have professional resume writers on staff who do this on a daily basis. So, yeah. Um, yeah, to answer your question, the process, it's resume and then any tag along services that they want, whether that's a mock interview with uh, some of one of our volunteers, um, some career counseling. Say one day you wake up and you say, I want to get into finance. Um, we can get you connected with a, a volunteer in finance who can walk you through day to day type stuff, salary outlook, how to market yourself and things mm-hmm. like that. So. I always tell my clients, you know, whatever you need career search wise, that's what we're going to help with. If we don't have the resource, we're going to help you find it. We've taken some flack at Mission 43 before where it's like, hey, cool. Like I got this awesome resume, but, you know, what next? Like how's Mission 43 going to connect me to this company Mm -hmm. specifically or this HR person? And now it's kind of cool because you have the experience in in that realm of resume writing. Yep. Like you said, like you can do it, yeah. but now in your role, hopefully you're not gonna have to do it as much personally, right. but you're overseeing them getting the resumes that they need, yep. 
and then doing that connection piece with yeah whatever with company they're targeting employers exactly. yeah absolutely and i think there's so much value that military veterans and male spouses bring to all these different companies throughout idaho they can yeah. at least um but i think a lot of those companies don't know who to reach out to mm-hmm. to get like that talent pipeline push yep. to them. Yep, and I, 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 that's one of my, my first goals is to connect with as many employers as possible so they, they know who to contact. Like you said, you know, they don't know who to contact sometimes. Um, so I, I want to be that liaison in between people that if it's an employer that's sending me 20 jobs that they need filled, yeah. I can go into my database, find 20 resumes, send it over to them, and then we can get some interviews set up. So it's I want to make that process as easy as possible for both sides, for both parties. What's a good like um, I guess target um, salary salary range? I get frustrated. We get hit up every day mm-hmm. on hey I've got I've got I want to hire veterans. I love veterans. Yeah. Like we we know that everyone yeah. loves veterans. Yeah. And then the jobs are really no veteran twelve dollars an hour. Yeah, yeah. No one is looking for these positions. Yeah. So. I guess what is your as you're taking on this role what kind of target range are you looking for yeah you know it, it all sort of depends on like i said at the beginning that the, where they're at in their career so you know the more experience obviously the higher salary like i have some some colonels who i'm in contact with who are you know going to be in that that six figure range because they have the experience the education and things like that so um i would say you know a lot of one of the things that we kind of talk about at higher heroes usa is making sure that you're not selling yourself short yeah and especially when you're transitioning you know don't just take the first job i did it myself i i would like to talk about that a little bit later in the podcast because um i made some mistakes along the way that i I like to share with my clients tell Um, us about them yeah so i mean when i got out of the marine corps i i just hopped on the first job you guys know what schwann's is yeah 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 Yeah. so i spent 36 hours as a schwann's driver (laughs) (laughs) thank you for my dinner absolutely i didn't actually do any deliveries oh (laughs) (laughs) i did i did my drug drug screening and i was uh Failed it. And doing then, yeah. obviously, <laughs> doing, doing a hours. PMCS uh, on one of the trucks, uh, getting ready to go out to some deliveries. And the guy looked at me and said, hey, man, do you like your family? And I said, yeah. He said, well, you're not going to see him anymore. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> well, um, I'm going to go I'm going to go find a different job. So I went to a, a sawmill um, in, in Lewiston. Yeah. Um, I was, it was a dollar pay raise for me. So hopped on that one. Uh, didn't like it. It what uh, that that kind of work wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. Um, hurt my back while I was out there, and so I, I re- quickly realized that, that that line of work wasn't for me. Um, so I, I did the the bouncing around. I I, I was a, a host at a, at a restaurant um, working with some some sixteen year olds, and they're like looking at me, and I'm twenty three years old. And like oh, why why are you here? Like oh, I just got out of the Marine Corps. I'm like you just got out of the what? And you're here what? Because <laughs> I didn't know how to market myself. I didn't know how to sell myself. You're not alone in that. Like yeah. What rank did you get out as? E four. Okay, so you're E four in the Marine Corps. You do four years. You're honorable discharge. Yep. I think a lot of people fall back into that trap. Yeah, it, because, you know, I, I joined for a reason because mm-hmm. I didn't want to go to college. I, I didn't know what, what was my next step in life. So I joined what, what anyone who did and I joined the Marine Corps. Um, well, not <laughs> a lot of people yeah. don't do that. <laughs> I know. I make that joke sometimes. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I, I feel like, you know, I gained some skills while I was in the Marine Corps, mm-hmm. leadership, accountability, all that type of stuff. But how to sell that in the civilian market is very hard. And so... That's where Mission 43 and Higher Heroes came in. Is I, I, I'm, I, I'm full cycle. I was a Higher Heroes USA client. I was a Mission 43 member. Um, and I ultimately, I networked myself into this role and into my transition specialist role I had previously. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. I, I'm not afraid to to share the mistakes that I made along the way. Um, and I know I kind of got off on a tangent there, Brian. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to say an exact number. But don't be afraid to sell yourself short. And on that... I mean, we have volunteers who are experts in talking about things like that mm-hmm. for salary negotiations, um, HR professionals who can who aren't afraid to tell clients like this is what you should be looking at. Like, don't sell yourself under this because this is what you're worth. Um, That's it, hugely valuable just to yeah. be able to have someone. And we hope that anybody listening to this podcast is like, hey, if you're a Mission Fourth member, you can pick up the phone and talk to Zach Tibbetts yeah. and actually get some advice mm-hmm. and say like, hey, I'm getting out as a whatever yeah. e or o whatever number mm-hmm. this is my experience range is my education level yeah. what should i be looking mm-hmm. at because you guys know like right now like what is the hot career field or fields in in idaho a couple um there's a lot of operational type stuff going on and you know organizational planning um that's there's a lot like the city of boise it's really hot right now i mean all the stuff going on there um there's a lot of hr roles um but the thing is is that people don't realize 
that, yeah, you need some years of experience under your belt, but sometimes you have that, even if it wasn't directly, you weren't, you know, you weren't working in the S1 admin office. Right. You still have leadership experience. You still have, you know, you took accountability of multi-million dollar equipment on a daily basis. Um, and so things like that, being able to tell clients, you know, you have this experience, you just got to market it the right way. You got to take off, take a, the humble hat off for a little bit mm -hmm. and, and sell yourself because, you know, you're going to be your biggest advocate here. Um, so logistics, operations, um, HR is huge, um, things like that. Uh, and, you know, there, there is, you know, the manual labor type jobs. Those are yeah. everywhere, um, especially down here in Boise. I mean, it's blowing up on the daily basis of, of all the things that are happening here. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's it's figuring out what you want to do, I, I think, is the biggest thing, um, which is hard. <laughs> yeah. No what, at what point should you start? Should you sign up with Hire Heroes USA if I'm thinking of leaving the military uh, and even if I'm out of state, like what yeah. point do I get started? We always suggest at least 90 days out. Like that, that's when I take that back. That's when you should start applying, like start getting on the job search. That's when you should start tailoring your resume, okay. putting the feelers out there, signing up for services. The, honestly, the, the farther out, the better, because like I have clients who sign up maybe two years before they're about two. to get out huh. because there's so much that goes into a job search and people don't really realize that, you know, you could do, a mock interview a week and by the time that it's game day for a real interview you're cocked lock and ready to rock yeah because you've done so many different interviews you know you're ready um so you know two years is obviously a little drastic but i would say you know at least maybe a year out from your eas ets um that's that's kind of the sweet spot we see it a lot now i guess i i see it a lot now as yeah. a part of mission 43 that i never saw when i was yeah. in it mm -hmm. in the military like i didn't see people investing in themselves or if they did it's different cultures and different units yeah, and yeah. everything like that, but it almost, it, I think it was seen as like selfish yeah, in some ways, but I think right. that's transitioning. I think now people are realizing to maintain a high quality force, like they have to be able to successfully transition people yeah, as well absolutely. Like to civilian mm -hmm. life. Otherwise everyone, it hurts retention because you see Zach getting screwed over at the end of his time, you know, yeah. or whatever, like that makes people make some decisions. Absolutely. It certainly affects mine. Yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah, it, you know, even if it's just, a, you know, 30 minutes a week that you're working on yourself, prepping your resume, um, talking to volunteers, talking to me. I mean, <laughs> I'm not afraid to have those, you know, even personal conversations. Yeah. You know, the stresses of the transition, they're real. I always tell everyone uh, you know, looking for a job is a full time job um, because you're shooting out applications. It gets really stressful. Um, you, you start to get down on yourself when you get those rejections. And it's a very real thing that a lot of us have been through. And so, you know, if you're able to talk about that with them, on a personal level, it, it, I think it goes really far. Well, you were a transition specialist that worked on the Mission 43 team yeah, for yep. a couple of years. Yeah, yep. And I'm sure people watching, some people recognize you from the <laughs> events of the, of the past, yeah, yeah. but then like the prodigal son, you left us. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, and I'd love to talk about that because I'm, I'm very transparent about it. Um, so I left, yeah, uh, mid-2021, and I, I'll be honest, I chased a dollar sign. Uh, I, I went after something that was kind of dangled in front of me. Um, it was a, a big number. I went after it um, and burnt out very quick. Mm. Um, I, I learned a lot about myself during that time period. Um, the things that I value, it's, it's definitely, you know, money's important, obviously, but it's not everything, especially in, you know, your daily work. You got to wake up and want to go to work, mm -hmm. um, which I did not want to do. <laughs> it was a very hard process. Um, I learned very quickly things that are important to me are culture. Um, leaders that support and, and want you to develop um, and they're vocal about that and so there's in my opinion there's no better place in the world than Hire Heroes USA for that the, the, the way that employees are valued from literally the top from the CEO down yeah um, just the amazing support that goes on um, between transition specialists everything like that and um, I like to tell people that because you know if you if you get out and you know you, you find a hundred thousand dollar a year job it's not everything it's cracked up to be most times. Um, sales is hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's really hard, especially if you're not supported in certain ways. Is that what you were doing? Yeah. I, I did uh, some tech sales for a little bit. Um, my, my, uh, my one and only sell, I sold $300 product. It was, it was groundbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dude, sales is not for everybody. I know it. it's not, it, it's, no it's way. really hard. Um, but I wanted to take a chance on myself. I took the chance. I learned from it. Um, and then I realized where I belong and mm -hmm. where, where I'm happy and where I can make an impact. And that's ultimately, ultimately here. So we have this 
we have this mentor that always says that people stay at a job for three reasons. They like who they work with. Yeah. They like who they work for. And then third is pay and benefits. I think that's very true for me at least because yeah. I don't want to at this stage of my life work for somebody or with somebody that I don't enjoy working. Yeah. It's really hard. I mean? It makes it really hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's so the yeah. culture, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. So culture, I mean, just that, that support and I mean, the veteran community, I mean, that's our people. And so it, it, when, when, when all of that combines into one, I'm making a, a, a positive impact on those that I care about. Um, it's, it's just, it's the full package. As a transition specialist, what were trends you saw? Like you, you're on the phone yeah. talking to people in this transition period all the time. So like, what, what were things you just kind of consistently saw that, um, people need to know about yeah. and Tailoring a resume is the biggest thing, I think. Um, a lot of people, when they get the resume from us, they just shoot blindly, shoot it out, you that know, a hundred times, yep. and it doesn't work. It's it's, <laughs> nope. it's it it doesn't work because it not only shows that you have a lack of motivation when you're applying for the job, it also shows that you know you didn't care and you didn't do your research. Uh -huh. um, to be blunt and, and candid, it's uh, you have to put in that work. You have to match up your resume to the job description, or else an HR professional is going to look at it and say he just shot out a resume like if you're if you're applying for an HR job with a logistics resume an operational resume it's going to get screened out you're not you don't stand a chance so mm -hmm. the, one of the biggest trend um, that I would say Brian was was resume tailoring um, but you we, guys will do that like if I come back and you, you have a, a baseline resume that you've built for mm -hmm. me and then I'm applying for say a finance position I come back to you you guys will tailor that in a certain way, yeah, yeah. In a certain way, um, you know, the, the transition specialists they get nine new clients every week. So you know, sometimes they don't have the amount of time, the bandwidth to, to tailor all the resumes. Yeah. But we do have is the resources to empower them to do it, um, because it's going to be happening on a daily basis. If you're in the middle of the job search, yeah. You know, you you can't um, depend on someone else to do everything for you. And so, you know, being realist and, and telling them, you know, this is what you need to do. And we're, we're going to walk you through how to do it. Absolutely. And we're going to give you feedback on it. Um, but ultimately, the goal is to empower the client to know how to tailor the resume and how to effectively conduct a job search, um, which sometimes that can be a hard conversation because they'll say, like, I don't know what I'm doing, man. Like, I'm here for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, but walking them through exactly how to do it, they it ends up being a better product overall because they know what they're doing and they feel more confident in their resume. So that I mean, the goal of the resume is to land the interview. And so then when they yeah. get to the interview, they're confident in their resume and they can speak to it at a high level. All right, Zach, hot seat. Hit me. You have to choose your favorite platform for that people should invest time in if they're looking for quality employment. Mm -hmm. LinkedIn. LinkedIn. <laughs> LinkedIn, LinkedIn, LinkedIn. I thought you were gonna say Craigslist. That's a good one. <laughs> it's a good one, a little outdated though. Oh, okay, either way. So why LinkedIn? Yeah. It's just, it's everything combined into one. It's networking, it's job search, it's a way to market yourself. Um, it, it's just everything combined into one. I, I, I've i learned a lot from uh, from my mentor. Um, his name's John Sievers. Um, he's taught me so much about LinkedIn that I'm able to talk about it at a high level with my clients and, and people wondering, you know, people will say, oh man, I, I'm, also, I'm off social media. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't wanna be on social media. LinkedIn isn't social media as much as <laughs> I don't know. Depends. Some people use some people it that make way. it yeah. social media. Yeah. Exactly. Some people make it. But the beautiful thing about it is you can take those people right out because if you're using LinkedIn for the reason that it's meant to be used for, your algorithm will give you the things that you need. So yeah. my algorithm is all jobs, veteran service organizations, and I keep all the personal stuff out. If I see someone posting about whatever, maybe their political stance, whatever the case may be, see ya. Like, I, LinkedIn is not for that. So is that's that why you blocked me? I might be. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that, are you getting like the exposure to jobs as you would like yeah. back in the day, or I don't know, maybe it is still, I remember Indeed or like yeah, other ones sure. like that. Sure. Are you getting all those jobs on LinkedIn? Are you getting exposed to those? The, the thing about the difference between LinkedIn and Indeed is LinkedIn's gonna have the more real legit jobs because oh. people are paying money of course you can pay money on indeed and things like that but the jobs on linkedin they're a lot more how should i say vetted i guess professional the, professional yeah um and you can if veterans also get a year free of premium membership and so when I've you have that when you have that premium membership you can see the hiring manager who's posting the job huh. which gives you the ability to reach out to them which gives you the ability to go into the organization, see who they're connected with, mm -hmm. and then start connecting with peers that you might be working with, 
which shows that you're putting in the work, you're doing the research um, and things like that. So the more active on LinkedIn, the better. I know some people are hesitant, but you got to have an open mind about it because the job search is it's a lot. It's a beast. And so the more tools that your tools and resources that you're using, the better. How do you get that? The premium membership just typed in LinkedIn for veterans okay on Google just do a quick Google search you sign up I think it's their ID, ID me okay um, nice. they'll, they'll, they'll verify it just type in your your info and yeah. are military spouses eligible if they have like a DOD dependent mm. card or no I'm not sure okay I'll have to get back to you on that one um, I'm not sure but th- there's a lot of people out there willing to help too so I mean yeah <laughs> transi- is, transition is premium specialist. worth it though it like, is absolutely I've never had it even though I'm not in the job search it's just the fact that I can I mean, you, you get things called in mails. If, if you're not connected to someone, you want to send them a, a message. You can get they're called in mails. So you have to be connected to send. But um, you get credits for that, and just all the other analytics. So, say that I want to go work for for the city of Boise, and they have a, a an HR something up there posted. I can see based on my qualifications that I have on LinkedIn where I stack up against the other applicants. And so they'll say, you know, 50% have a bachelor's degree, which is what you have. Mm. 40% have a master's degree. And, and so on and so forth for, you know, 40% have these same skills that you do. And so it just, it gives you a better idea um, about that. And also you can see some more salary insights as well, if they're not directly posting them out there. We have a lot of really badass female veterans and military spouses in our network. Yeah. And I've been hearing them talk about some, I don't know if it's a study or whatnot, but basically men are generally more apt to shoot for a job that they may not be fully qualified for. Absolutely than women Very real. I don't know do you see that with veterans in general because like to me in my experience is like well if you don't have this qualification and it says you need this qualification I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna entertain it absolutely and but, I was the exact same way so it's is real. that a thing from the military I absolutely think? because veterans and military spouses as a whole are very humble um, you know they don't want to they don't want to get the they don't want to sometimes you know say what they did or or be proud of what they did in a civilian setting um, and so, yeah, you have to kind of take that off. And even if you're, we, we suggest if you're 70% qualified for a job, you make 70% of the qualifications, get the application in. Hmm. Um, you don't have to check every box because some of those boxes they have on there are on the job training skills and things like that that you're going to learn. Um, and so, yeah, be confident, get that out there, tailor your resume, tailor your resume, tailor your resume. Um, and you're going to, you're going to set yourself up for success there. What about remote work? How many people are finding remote work right now? And a like lot. Specifically in Idaho, or is, there, is there a lot of people who are working out of state? Um, nationally, yes, because a lot of, you know, post-COVID and everything like that, people are just staying remote because they found that employees like it a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, it's, it, it's either, you know, they'll do a hybrid setup, you know, two days in the office, three right. days remote or, or fully remote. Um, it's a, It's very much so a... An employee market right now. Um, the, the people kind of coined it the Great Resignation. Yeah. If you're not happy, you know people are going to leave because they're very empowered right now to to make those selections because mm-hmm. um, they might want to be remote full time. And there's tons of jobs out there where they're going to offer full remote. And so to answer your question, I don't. You know, Idaho is a little bit different um, because we don't have. We have a couple different, like bigger organizations here in Idaho that that do offer that full remote status. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, there there are also a lot more mom and pop shops that you know they need that hands on employee in the office at the shop, whatever the case may be. So it, it's a mixed bag here in Idaho. But I would say nationally, um, there is a very very robust remote offerings. Dude, my neighbor works for Google, like full yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. So he's making Google money. Yeah. And lives next door to me. Yeah. Do you see that trend happening in Idaho where people are like, yeah, I could make this much here, but a full remote job in a market like Chicago or New York yeah. or L.A., mm-hmm. I could be making a lot more. Is that a thing? Or Yeah. I- yeah. I, I would say it's, it's becoming more of a thing um, because kind of scary. It is because, <laughs> <To> me. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I mean, obviously, we live here in the great state of Idaho. We want to keep as many people here in Idaho as possible mm-hmm. working for Idaho, boosting the economy. And so I would, you know, if, if I get the chance, I would like to, you know, I'm sure employers see that, but also share with them, you know, veterans want to work remote too. Like there's people out there that want to be in a remote status, military spouses. If a military spouse can work remote, 
and you know her husband or, or significant other PCSs, mm -hmm. and she can stay in that remote status. That takes down so many barriers for That's them, um, because you know sometimes maybe certifications won't cross state lines or or things like that. And so being able to have that remote status can be a huge huge key factor for some families. I think going forward, like I said, you're in this unique position of mm -hmm. the the program manager, the area manager yeah. for Idaho and working in employment, but there's a lot of crossover in Mission 43 between employment and education. Absolutely. And what Allison Garrow is doing with like the project management professional certification mm -hmm. course that we have, 100% pass rate, by the way. That's fantastic. Compared <laughs> to the national yeah. average of like 40. Yeah. That's not traditional education, I think, and a lot of veteran service organizations out there view education as mm -hmm. like guiding people on how to spend their GI Bill. Right. These other opportunities that we collectively, Allison from Mission yeah, 43 yeah. has has put together um, and that we scholarship for military and military spouses yeah. lead directly to you in your role because it's not just education for education's sake, it's education geared toward career advancement or Absolutely. a higher paying job. Yeah. What certifications are your hot ones now? Because we offer a couple. Of course, PMP. I mean, that's okay. a huge one. Um, SHRM is also really... What is that? So the Society for Human Resources... I don't know it's, exactly it's what it stands HR. for. It's, it's, HR, HR, it's an HR yeah. certificate. It's like the, the cream of the cream. It's like PMP for HR professionals. Um, it's it's a big certification. Um, Do you have to have a college degree to get that? I'm not positive on that. Okay. Um, I've never really looked into it myself. I just know that it's a very hot thing yeah. to have for HR, HR professionals. Is not going away. It, 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 yeah, <laughs> it, <laughs> it makes you stand out um, just like a PMP would for, for someone getting into operations, project management, whatever the case may be. Um, SHRM, cybersecurity, um, all of that type of stuff. There's so much going on in, in the IT world. Yeah. Um, Security Plus, Cisco certifications, things like that. Those are all really popular. Um, so yeah, so IT, operations, human resource management, um, those are the those are the top ones that come to mind. Well, we're looking at quite a few of them, and Allison's always busy yeah. in develop, developing them. But now with you on board and working that hand in hand, that's the kind of synergy that mm -hmm. we see. Mission Forty Three, yeah, to benefit the employers of Idaho and the veterans and and veteran families of Idaho as yeah. well, because a lot of it's just that minor skills gap, that minor cert yeah. certification that you don't have. That's preventing you from making an extra twenty grand a year, yeah. which in Idaho can go a long way. You know Very what I mean? far. Yeah, I mean, how cool would it be to, to have someone come in and join Mission Forty Three, get scholarship for the certification mm -hmm. that's going to set them apart, get a professionally written resume from Higher Heroes USA, yep. USA, learn how to network, learn how to uh, connect with like-minded individuals. I mean, that's that's the whole package right there. That's the transition package right there. And so that that's really exciting to hear. That, I mean, that Mission Forty Three, and you know, we're we're looking that down that avenue because. That's very, very powerful. <laughs> people are doing it. It's, it's, it's cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. Especially the people who aren't looking for like to be there, have their hand held the whole way through it. They're mm -hmm. like proactive. Yeah. Like good things come to those people who are doing it. It's Absolutely. just impressive to see the results that they're getting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and motivation is obviously a, a big factor in the job search. So yeah. Yeah. If you have those things, the, those, those tangible items that you can get um, that are out there and, and you're having the resources fed to you, it can be, it can be a very quick success story. Well, Zach, you have an amazing amount of experience in this realm. We're just so happy that Thank you. you're back on yeah. the team and yeah. and leading this portion of Mission 43 Thank for you. us. And uh, don't leave again. No, I'm, I'm, I'm here for good. <laughs> yeah, I'm here for good. So, yeah, very happy to be here, guys. Um, very excited for what's to come. Awesome. Right, brother. Thanks, Thanks for, for being awesome. here. Thanks for joining us for the Mission 43 podcast. Our purpose is to provide you opportunities to lead, learn, and inspire throughout your Idaho communities. We want to hear what you thought. Like, subscribe, or leave a comment below.